to reign in our lives. Let God hear your voice. Say, Father God, just continue to reign. We are pleased to have you, Lord, as our King. We are happy because you are the one reigning in our lives. No doubt about you, Lord. We are highly privileged to have you, Lord, as our Lord and King and Savior. I want to say, Lord, that we appreciate you again and again and again. Just go ahead and reign in our lives. Yes, then. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Keep on reigning, keep on reigning, keep on reigning. Let your name be continually glorified. Thank you, Father God. For in Jesus' name we pray. to say we appreciate you. All the time, by your special grace, we want to say we recognize your supremacy. We cherish your almightiness. Your kingdom is a everlasting kingdom, and indeed the only kingdom of peace. We bless your holy name because you have decided to magnify yourself in our lives and to reign again and again and again. And we say, Lord, keep on reigning Amen. in our destiny, Amen. in our lives, Amen. in our marriages, Amen. in our careers. Amen. Keep on reigning, Daddy, Amen. and let your name be glorified. Amen. We pray, Lord, that today, one more time, let the wind blow in our favor. Amen. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pray the Lord. Let someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Anytime I hear songs like this, normally create 
what I refer to as somehow a rest in the life of someone. I met a couple in uh, Antwerp, and that is in Belgium, fire, on fire for the law, and they are Iranians. And uh, they had to uh, flee from their nation because they wanted to kill them to have confessed the Lord. And they told me, they said, we found just a little copy of the Bible. And we began to read it. And suddenly we discover any time we read the Bible, we are consoled. Any time we read our home book in their own religion, we are condemned. Ah, they say you need to see the joy of reading the scriptures. Ah, what kind of spirit is inside this book that gives you joy? See, that is why we surrender our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a kingdom known as the kingdom of peace. And that kingdom is the one that Jesus Christ governs. And the truth is not far away. You point to a particular nation where Jesus Christ is hated and they have peace. You point to someone. You point to one. See, in this nation, they don't love Jesus, so they don't serve Jesus, so they criticize Jesus, so they pass school Christians and they have peace. You're going to discover. That's a kingdom indeed, not the kingdom of Jesus. Let somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15 to 16, and 21 to 22. Exodus chapter 14, we read first verse 15 to verse 16. Then 21 to 22, and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cry thou unto me, speak on the children, uh, unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and defy it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Verse 21, and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caught the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went to the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left and, and on their left. I'm trusting the Almighty God that the way maker will make ways for you. Yeah. Let your hear may be heard in heaven. Yeah. All what you want to do today is to refer to all that there is a particular wind that is already blowing and in the wind of progress and blessings. The wind of what? Progress and blessings. They have been in the land of captivity for years. And the time came when they were to leave all these problems behind them once and for all. And here was a particular, may I call it, a blockage that will not allow them to go. And the Almighty God knew what to do and he did what he only can do. He released a wind. He just spoke to the people, go forward. Don't bother about the obstacles. I will part the water. I will create an, an expressed, expressed way where there's no way. All oh, what God did was to release a wind, and that is how the people of Israel left the land of each, I mean, of slavery once and for all. 
Before the end of this month, actually starting from today, the way maker will open ways for you. Amen. You are leaving behind you all what is known as stagnation, Amen. slavery, Amen. captivity, Amen. poverty, Amen. sorrow, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Let go hear your amen louder. The passage I have just read, we see two principal dimensions. One is God's role, the part of God. And two, we see human role. In other words, there is what only God can do, and there is what we must do. Um, I'm trusting the Almighty God. In the next few minutes, the Lord will act on your behalf, and He will tell you what to do. And by His grace, you will not fail. In 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, 2 Kings 7, 1, there they have been farming for over three or uh, seven years to also say. And uh, Elisha just spoke. Say, hear the word of the Lord. Thus say the Lord. Tomorrow about this time I measure of fine flour be so for a second. A two measure of body for a second in the gate of Samaria. In other words, this is what the Almighty God has decided to do. And He has sent me to release the word. So God made up for His mind to do something, but that thing will be declared. So it is now the responsibility of God's representative to have it declared. If the prophet had not declared it, there would be no miracle. Today, by his grace, there will be declarations, there will be pronouncements, there will be decree. By the special grace of God, you are going home with signs and wonders and miracles. Let's start by saying there is a wind that presents God as a way maker. Such a wind is what we have discovered here. It to present the law as a way maker. So I want you to begin to think which of the crossroads you have reached now and you don't even know the way forward any longer. Have you reached a terminus or you've reached a bus stop and you don't even see any road to the light to the left or right there before you there is a God who is known as a way maker he will make way for you I say he will make way for you this God releases a wind that removes obstacle. And by the time the obstacle is removed, suddenly you are going to discover what is known as freedom and progress. That is what he did for the people of Israel. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 10, Exodus chapter 15, verse 10, say, Thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. You just release your wind, and we could see the enemy, you were all drowned. By his grace today, wherefore I've been holding you captivity, the wind of the Almighty God will blow them away. Amen. This wind of God can put a stop to the storms of life. Any time there's one is passing through a particular storm in life, all what God needs to do is to release a wind. 
And this wind of God, I'm telling you, can put a storm to the storms of life. I know a particular lady. Her academics was a serious battle. If there is another language we could use, was a battle, was a combat. Where she supposed to spend how many years? Four years. She ended up spending almost nine years. I mean, come and see her married her life. No green light whatsoever. And she just graduated that particular year. And within four months, within four months of her graduation, she was gainfully employed at the Ministry of Earth of that nation. It's not in Africa here. And she was engaged. And within one year, what you think a lady should do in life she had all. And she said, this is how God catapulted the life of someone. He said, last year, <laughs> I'm trusting God for somebody here today. The Lord will release a wind. Yeah. And every storm in your life will cease. Yeah. That's what God did for Noah. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 1. Genesis chapter 8, verse 1. And God remembered Noah. Who is the next one here that God will remember? And God remembered Noah. And what did God do? Listen. The Bible says, And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters were as waves. Another translation says, the waters dried up. Another translation says, the waters subsided by releasing wind. These have been the people that were kicked in. They could not go out for 40 solid days. The storm were there. And suddenly God said, God knew what to do in order to put a hand to the storm of their lives. He released the wind. And before you knew it, the water that had been falling from nowhere began to dry up. What did that storm in your life? A wind is blowing. And by the special grace of God, every storm in your life we see from today. I can't hear your hymn louder. And number four, be reminded also that God has a wind that gets rid of destructive agents. God has us a thing, a particular wind, and by the time God releases us a wind, whatever has been destroying your life will just disappear. In Exodus chapter 10, verse 19, Exodus 10, 19, and the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind. We took away the locusts and cut them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coast of Egypt. You know, locust is a destructive agent. I mean, you fed in all their grains, all their crop, everything. And even tomorrow, what? Because on their bed everywhere you see locals. <laughs> Farm owls were crying. And they know we are heading for a serious famine. What did God do? God just released a wind. And when that wind blew, I quote, there remains not one locust in the coast of Egypt. The Lord just packed all of them and dropped them to somewhere. So what are destructive agents in your life? Things that will say you should labor, you should work, but there will be nothing to show for it. Things that will not say you should not 
uh, labor, but they are waiting for the time of harvest to invade your life as it were. The wind will be released. Yeah. And every agent of destroying your life, the Lord will take care of that and remove them today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I can't hear your amen louder. Yeah. I'm happy to tell you also that the wind in charge of needs is blowing. A wind that makes sure that your needs are met is blowing. In Numbers chapter 11, verse 31, Numbers 11, 31, and there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quays from the sea and let them fall by the camp as it were a day journey on this side and it were a day journey but were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. They needed to eat, particularly meat. And God is a, the greatest provider of barbecue. <laughs> How he gathered all the fowls together, we don't know it today. All quay. I know what is called quay in our village. They're very, very, very sweet bird, and they are very scarce. That is the egg you buy at times. It's like uh, I've forgotten the other. So when you get a quay, oh, you rejoice. God sought, fish them out wherever. And God didn't bring them like that for them to be prepared. No. He has already prepared. He has removed all the intestine. He has removed everything where barbecued and brought them. They are not one. They are not two. To tell you how many, God is striped. They say they are three cubic high. So it's almost as high as this. And wherever, wherever you are standing in the middle of where the fair, you need a day to walk this way. Another 24 hours to walk this way. So if you are to cover the circumference, where the cover, what you call it, the diameter of where the cover, you need to walk for two days. In other words, uh, between here and Fihai, Abby, do you need one day to walk between here and Fihai? I don't think so. Maybe to a pair, I mean, or something of that, or to camp. That means when you stand like this, you need to, from bit here to redemption camp or to a way. And around that part, you need to, I mean, this God, this God, this God, this God, this God, this All this happened by your releasing a wind. Do you know it can meet your need adequately? And by the time you are rounding up this month, you are marching into your victory. Yeah. Your needs will be met. Yeah. I can't hear your email louder. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. When we are talking about this God meeting all our needs. January this year, January this year, that is your dedicated prayer and meditation center, as well as studio of prayer in. How many of you have been there? You have a few people. <laughs> we didn't raise any fund, and I'm telling you, no fund was raised. And we had in our account, your 15 million. The last calculation from the accountant said we've spent not less than about a billion. No fund was raised. And this particular provision of God and this thing were built within a year. We are no 
standard is compromised. Then I spoke to the attack yesterday. The attack is based in Canada. And we were discussing about the next phase, which is already drawing. It has been approved again. We call it phase three. And we discovered that what we have built so far is a child play compared with what we are about to do. God is just saying, let me create a conducive environment for prayer so that prayer can be attracted to people. We have put prayer to background. Financial institutions, see what they are building and so on and so forth. But God really wants to know, let you know that I dwell inside the house of prayer. My house has become what? The house of prayers. How many millions? I don't know now. And I was talking to the attack yesterday. Say, please go on, please go on. As if there's money there. Because I know this God is a stream, it can provide for you. We bought a chain, 100 kV, 100 kV each. And we bought it since January or February last year. Knowing fully well that uh, price of things are increasing. But by the time we finish the project, we discover that the load that we have, the capacity of the money generator cannot carry the load. So about a month ago, they gave me the B of two generators that we need. They say between 60 and 70 million. And we had 9 million. But that's a God who provides. Lord, this is your project. And within three weeks, we bought the two generator. <laughs> within three weeks. We still have left over. I mean, so this God has a way of providing for his own people. So relax. He will provide for you. Amen. Trust him. He will meet all your needs. Amen. I can't hear your email louder. Amen. Recently, I considered the exchange rate. And I began to have concern for all parents whose children are currently schooling abroad. I mean, really concern. And when I began to have that pain in my heart, not I mean, by God's grace, all my children are already on their own. No way you give me. I mean, not sponsoring any education any longer. Only what they are giving me now is the grandchildren. So, I began to think about how will they cope. And God spoke to me, how did you cope? During your own time. How did you cope? Were you the one who sponsored your children or I? Or me? So I did remember, there was a time where we even thought of redrawing the war in England to come back home because we could not cope with the king grade then, that was about eight, nine years ago. And then we cried to this God. I was in Magodo, akin unto me, international or something. A woman, see, today that woman is not yet a member of Redeemed Christian Church of God. A woman, after the program, she found a way of connecting with me. Sir, when you were ministering, God spoke to me. You have a child in England. God says, I should take Kofa as school fees until she graduates. I couldn't believe my eyes and my ears. I sat her down and I gave her some education of what she is talking about. She began to beg me, please, so don't take it away from me. It is God who asked me to do it. Too. And I began to shake my head like a gamalist. And yes, you are correct. You can. You are. You are free to do it. You are free to do it. As if I. <laughs> the Lord will meet all your needs. You. Amen. He will provide for you. Amen. He will surprise you. Amen. By the special grace of God, miraculously, all your needs will be met. Amen. Because He has a wing to meet all your needs. The children of Israel, they hate, hate, hate. And even God condemned them. Why are you hitting like this? 
They hurt, 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 hurt with the that barbecue. If I were these people also, I would eat like that too. Original barbecue prepared by God Himself. I don't know how sweet that barbecue will be, but it will be very, very sweet. He will meet your need. Finally, I'm happy to tell you also there's a wind that puts a hand to dryness. Puts a hand to what? Dryness. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 45, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 45, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven were black with clouds and the wind, and there was a great rain, and he had brought and went to Israel. Immediately the wind arrived or appeared. Rain started. The rain began. The rain didn't come until that wind blew. And you know the importance of rain. This time around they have been in farming. Everywhere was dry. And God has a way of putting a hand to dryness on ground by releasing a wind that we usher in the rain. And you know the importance of this rain. Several things happened immediately. Dryness disappeared. Whatever is the definition of dryness in your life, that dryness will disappear today. Let go hear your email louder. I knew, I mean, I know how the farmers normally prepare for the rain. They will make their heaps or ranges or whatever. Now bury their yam sets. There are two bars of yam, yam set. They will bury it there. They cover it with certain grass so that the sun will not scorch it and decay, waiting patiently for the rain to fall. Immediately the rain falls. What will happen to that thing they planted? It suits up. When the rain falls, the seed planted germinates. Many of us are here. We planted several seeds. As you are sitting down right now, you are showing a seed of the certain spiritual life. You have what to do. Many of you, you ought to be in your offices right now. Many of you in your store right now. Many of you, you are tired. You need to rest. But you are all these things. You come. It's a seed. You remember your, your, your giving, your offering, your tithes. How you have been doing the work of God. They are all seeds. But on the rainforest, it cannot germinate. And God must release a particular wind to allow the rain to fall. I'm trusting the almighty God. Your seed will germinate. <laughs> the seed stone will germinate. I can't hear your email louder. Nobody will be encouraged to plant again if the one planter is not, not germinated. If the harvest is not there. I'm trusting God that particular rain that will encourage you is about to fall in the name of Jesus. Let God hear your email louder. And of course, when the rain fell, not only the dryness disappeared, the heat of the day also disappeared. We are passing through a lot of heat in Nigeria today. I, somebody came from Houston and uh, met me in the office and I was with them in January. 
the very first time I will enter the western and I need to kit myself because of the severe cold. And I told the fellow, yes, it has appeared all oh, the good weather we need to have here. They have also been directed to Wisting to hurt to your own thing there. And I think about a few weeks ago, a few days ago, the rain fell at the Jameson City. And you need to see how that particular heat suddenly disappeared. It has come back again because... But what I'm trying to say is this. Any time there's rain, Whatever I know now, the heat disappears. What is the definition of, of your own heat in your life? In your marriage? In your career? The rain is about to fall. And that heat will disappear. I can't hear, I can't hear your hymn louder. And I'm trusting God for you. That the time has come for that rain. To fall because the Lord is here releasing the wind and the wind of blessing and progress is already blowing. Stand on your feet, stand on your feet. Play the name of the Lord because you are in this particular system when the wind is blowing, particularly in your faithful blessing. Let God hear your voice. Say, Father, I want to thank you, Almighty God, I want to thank you. King of glory, I want to thank you. Lord of lords, I want to thank you. Eternal rock of ages, I want to thank you. I am that I am. I want to thank you. 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 Glory and honor and power and dominion to your holy name. Oh, yes, Lord. I want to thank you, Daddy God. Yes, Daddy. Oh, Materi Kasanta Ramba Koton Torikisni. Ye Kalara Kasanta Boba Rikisni. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You have heard what the wind are blowing, they actually, it's actually doing in our time right now. You are going to pray loud and clear. Say, Father. Father. Let God hear you. Say, Father. Father. All my faithful, all my let the wind blow. Yes. Pray that prayer. All my faithful, Daddy. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow on my favor. King of glory, let the wind blow. Lord of Lord, let the wind blow. Oh, yes, Lord. Pray, 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 pray. Say, Father, let that wind that put an end to any known dryness, let it blow. Let it blow. Let it blow. Every dryness in my life, let it be over. Pray, pray, pray that the wind in charge of meeting the needs will begin to blow towards your direction. Right now, right now, right now. Pray that the Almighty God will release the wind, that we get rid of all destructive agents out of your life. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Pray that the Lord will put a stop to all the storms of life. There's a particular wind that put a stop to all the storms of life, that that wind will begin to blow right away in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that the Lord will bring the wind, O oh God, that will remove all kind of stagnation, all kind of slavery in the mighty name of Jesus. The wind of Paleka Sanda. Lord God, let the way be created where there's no way before. So the wind in charge of creating ways where there be no one before. Release that wind, O oh God. Pray with all your heart. Pray with all your heart. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. We read a particular passage in Exodus chapter 15, verse 10. Exodus 15, 10. You know, when the wind blew that time in the land of Egypt, it blew in favor of certain people, but blew against certain people where an expressway was created for the people, for certain people to cross over. Exodus 15, 10 says, God blew with his wind and covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. So the same wind that created way for certain people drowned 
certain people. He repeated that one in the day of Noah. Why am I reading this? Please, if you are here today and you are not on the side of the Almighty God, this is the high time you surrender your life to God. This is the high time. The wind is blowing, and I'm telling you, the wind is blowing. Let this wind be permitted by God himself to blow in your favor. Don't allow this wind to blow contrary. And I'm trusting the almighty God. The wind that is blowing will blow in your favor. Because I know you will surrender your life to the one who is in charge of this wind. So all high schools, you are here right now. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. Can they lift up your hand wherever you are? Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. The wind is blowing. The wind is blowing. You, do, you want this wind to blow in your favor. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. And you are going to see God in action. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. All of you are watching online, do likewise, please. Lift up your hand wherever you are watching from. And the name of the Lord be glorified. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you very much because definitely, undoubtedly, the wind is blowing. And Lord, we have discovered today how you have made yourself known to all that you are a way maker. I pray for all your children that are lifting up their hands up to surrender their life to you, that you will save them that you will create a conducive environment for their lives, that you will make a way of salvation to their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy, for having answered. In Jesus' name we pray. So all of us now, let's lift up our hands as we are going to pray. From the message of today, I speak into your life that where there be no way for you before now, this God will make a way for you. I speak into your life that the wind that remove obstacles will begin to blow to your direction. I speak into your life that that wind that puts an end to all the storms of life will begin to blow in your favor. I speak into your life that wind that removes or get rid of the all destructive agents, let that wind begin to blow in your favor. In the name of Jesus, we've read about the wind that re is released to meet all needs. I pray for you today that this month, the wind that God will release to meet all your needs will be released in Jesus' name. We have also, also discovered a wind in charge of the end of dryness. Ah, whatever is known as dryness in your life that has made the ground of your life to be hard, I speak into your life. That wind that brings the rain, that will soften your ground, that will produce fruit, that will make dryness disappear, let that wind be released into your life in Jesus' name. This month is a be well with you. This month, by the special grace of God, your life will be directed by God. And the name of the Lord be glorified. The power of the Lord be manifested. Thank you, Daddy, for having us. Glory be to your holy name. Honor be to your holy name. Adoration be to your holy name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say amen loud and clear. Loud and clear. Say in the name of Jesus. Say, in the name of Jesus, the wind is already blowing. In my favor, put your hand together for Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Please, let's stretch out our hands towards Daddy and begin to pray. That the wind will blow in his favor in the name of the Lord Jesus. Our Father and our God, let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow to aid your son, to help him, to support him, to strengthen him. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, let the wind of God blow before him.
to continue to make ways where there seems to be no way in the name of the lord jesus that let your wind blow behind him to propel him and to push him to greater heights in the name of the lord jesus that he let your wind blow to his left to his right to stabilize him and to establish his goings in the mighty name of the lord jesus that every work that you have placed in his hands father let your wind blow upon it in the name of the lord jesus let them develop a life of their own in the mighty name of the lord jesus that in the life of your son you will do great and mighty things that only you can do thank you daddy because it is done sir blessed be to your holy name forever in jesus mighty name we pray with thanksgiving amen. and the people said they live in amen. amen appreciate the name of the lord it is time to give an offering unto the lord please let's bring out a worthy offering as we give unto the lord praise the name of the lord how about you join me in praising god I have seen his goodness. Ah, oh, join me in praising God. I have seen his goodness. Everybody said, I have seen his goodness. Come join me, said, Have you seen his goodness? I'm gonna say, Join me. Oh, come and join me. I, I have seen his good. I know my own sorrow. Baba, I bow my call. He won't be saved. I know my own sorrow. I know my own sorrow. I want him want the name of the Lord. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the offerings of your children. Daddy, let it be unto your sweet smell and servo. Daddy will accept us and he will accept our offerings. And this offering will cause the wind that has begun to blow to blow with greater intensity. And it will blow over our finances. And our finances and our financial worries shall be over in the name of the lord jesus your name shall be glorified thank you daddy it is done in jesus mighty name we pray praise the name of the lord now please be reminded that tomorrow is communion service here in the auditorium so make it um, a date with the lord um, when you partake in the flesh and the blood of the lord jesus you become one with him and when you become one with him there is no height that you cannot reach the Lord bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everlasting and eternal God, we thank you for this prayer ring service. And we thank you for everything that you have done already. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. We thank you because immediately we leave this auditorium, we shall see, begin to see the evidence in the name of the Lord Jesus. In our lives, we will see the evidence. In our destiny, the evidence will be clear. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in our finances, in our careers, the evidence will be clearly seen in the name of Jesus. In our homes, there shall be evidence. In our ministries, in our callings, there shall be evidence. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and your name shall be glorified. Thank you, Daddy, for doing it and do much more. Blessed be to your holy name forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's share grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Shalom.